In the previous episode we painted the camouflage of the invader. Today we are going to continue airbrushing but this time it is going to be the markings that we are going to focus on. First I am going to deal with the areas which are going to be covered with insignia white and I am going to cover all the area and then mask and apply the other colors because the insignia white of course will be the lightest color and I don't want it to have any difficulties covering and carefully inspecting the provided guideline in the manual of the kit I will try to position this as good as possible and then I'll burnish it down so that the mask can stick on the surface and I'll try to remove the carrier film without disturbing the mask too much. Alright, this should be good. It is time for the insignia white. I think it's a good practice to burnish the mask right before you start painting. Especially on such places like this actuator bump here, where it can lift rather easily and happily, if I may say so. I'll try to do some marbling here to make the markings like they are worn and also more featureful. And now let's put the blend coat down. The masks that I am using are from kitmasks.com. Kevin did a great job making those custom masks for me. And the only thing I had to do was to scan the decal sheet and do a couple of measurements. If you need custom masks, check the link in the description of this video. Kevin also has some ready made masks and the selection is expanding. So you may be lucky and there are already masks for you. So give him a visit, it's worth it. And before we continue any further, let's feed the instant gratification monster by removing a little bit of masking. Nice. Next up comes the insignia, right? First for some service stencils, like these here that mark where the propeller goes and the walkways on the top of the wings which I already painted. Before we can start painting the insignia red stripes, I must first apply the mask, the whole piece. Now in order to paint the red stripes, I will remove their portion of the masking but I will not throw them away but instead keep them so I can install them back later in order to protect the red paint from the other colors. And after some additional countermeasures I will start applying the Insignia Red from MRP. And after this is dry I will apply the masks again and we'll proceed to the next color. Hold on, hold on. We cannot leave this color without some weathering. And I think it will be a good thing to apply some fading with very, very highly diluted buff paint with some Mr. Rapid Thinner. Okay, the painting of the walkways is complete. And now we can enjoy the removal of the masking. Now let's set the stage for the insignia blue. And first we'll have to return the masks of the red areas on their places. And now we can remove the mask that covers the blue area. As usual, links to most tools and materials I use can be found in the description of this video. 
and now we can paint. First I'm going to do something like a pre-shading, going over the panel lines and the paint I'm going to use is Surprise Surprise Insignia Blue from MRP and this should be matching FS15044 or ANA502 so I guess this should be the correct color I'm going to repeat the buff fading procedure here as well, so let's do just that. Okay, this is the moment of truth I guess. Let's see how our masking came out to do its job. Not too bad, I think. Actually, real happy with it. Now we'll have to put down some yellow. And while these large stencils are not particularly hard to apply, the smaller ones are quite tricky because of their size, but mainly because of such letters like O, R, B, and such that have parts of them which are not connected to the rest of the mask and with the smallest of the scripts this usually leads to this fill remaining on the transfer film and needing to be manually placed which is not that easy actually but anyhow the masks are on and we can start painting the yellow color that I'm going to use is RLM04 and it is from Mr. Hobby Unfortunately it comes in a semi-gloss finish and for this reason I added a little bit of flat varnish inside to get it to a flat finish. Here I am again going to try and add some variation in the paint, especially and primarily on the larger areas. And the yellow might not be ideal for this job because it needs to cover nicely and have a good uh, color saturation and maybe it won't be able to create such an effect as the blue for instance but let's see what will happen Keeping it close to the plot line, I'm going to do the buff therapy over the yellows and this will not only give the color a little bit more faded look but also will warm it up a little bit because this yellow is a little bit cold for my taste and because this is very highly diluted and you probably don't see anything, let me demonstrate here that we have something in the airbrush actually. You see, we are painting some buff. On top I am going to get a little bit heavier with the buff, so we can account for the sunshine that's received by this area. I think that we will benefit from a tiny amount of insignia white with the buff, so let's see what's going to happen. And all that we have to do right now is to remove the masking. And I'll let you be the judge of the results, but in my opinion the decals are just no match for painting with masks. 
Yes, it is a little bit more cumbersome, maybe a little bit more cumbersome, but if the final result is what does matter, this is the way to go. And since decals came up in the picture, let's see what actually we have to put on as a decals. Interestingly enough, here we can see our build. We have the nose art to place and then we have a few writings here above the escape hatch for the gunner compartment. But as you can see on this silver aircraft, we have quite a lot more technical stencils on the nose area, which on this side are clearly missing. I will assume that this is due to the fact this has been repainted on the field and probably they didn't have the stencils or whatever reason, they were not applied. Also we have a few decals, actually two decals to apply here on each engine gondola to account for the fuel tank filler cap, but I will be adding this after I do the chipping. The nose art practically does not have any carrier film or if there is some it is minimal so I will go ahead and attach it directly without any kind of varnish okay it is time to apply the nose art decal one benefit of the matte surface is that there is no surface tension to speak of and I can spread the mark setter without it accumulating in certain areas. Now let's squeeze out the excess solution and water. Now we will have some serious chemicals on the decal and I will do a hyperlapse to show you how it actually looks when the hypersol is working on the decal. I have left the hypersol for a few hours to finish doing what it's doing. As you can see the decal has laid down quite nicely even on the scoop but as usual the panel lines are quite difficult to get so what I'll do is run the scalpel blade along the panel line and I'll add some more of the hypersol. For the small decals I applied some gloss varnish as they have quite a lot of carrier film. Since there are only two decals of this type to put, I didn't cover the entire airplane. Besides, we have some chipping to do in the next episode, so yeah, varnishing the entire surface would not end well in this case. Also in the next episode I am going to deal with the entire weathering of this airplane. So for most of you I think this will be the most interesting video of the series. In fact, you can follow the progress and see what is already done on my Patreon page. There I post almost daily updates with a lot of pictures and ad free videos. For this and more interesting content visit the link in the description. Thank you for watching and until next time, happy modeling fellas!